you have got to be kidding me that there's a squirrel on my barbecue to start the day. You know, I had a squirrel postcard up for sale for a contest yesterday and no one bought it. And I think this is someone trying to troll me by sending a squirrel over here. <laughs> Daisy, you're supposed to get squirrels like that. What are you doing? You're just guarding this area. Do I need to get reinforcements? All right. Let's go. Let's take you out for a little morning walk. <laughs> All right, I'm here with the one and only, the beautiful Mrs. Prime Times. And now shaking her head. She's like, well, you know, I don't know if I match right now. And then she looked over at me. She said, well, you're wearing a slurpy shirt, so I guess it doesn't really matter. So we're going to head out right now and uh, we're going to find some treasures, right? Fist bump. Come on, don't leave me hanging. <laughs> you can see her face. Well, we're at the first sale. It's an estate sale slash yard sale. Uh, it's a big line of cars. It's not too far away from Primetime Treasure headquarters. So let's go check it out. So here we are. And as you can see, the actual house is set way back down that driveway. Now, Mrs. Primetime and I drive past this house all the time. And we've always wondered how much it costs to remove snow from the driveway. Now, speaking of the driveway, everything for sale was on the driveway. It's not a sale. We will go into the house, and I'll explain why a little bit later. This is the first piece that I came across sitting right on the table. I pop open the lid, look inside, and it looks to be complete. And so I'm like, this looks like a cool piece. So it doesn't have batteries, of course. So I take my C batteries out of my blue bag, put them in, and it's lighting up, as you can see, but it's not working in terms of them dancing. So I look at the instructions, and it says you have to put it by a sound source. So, okay. Hey, frogs, will you start moving around for me here? <laughs> start talking. So the dancing frogs worked after all. I picked it up for $2. It sells for around $75. So that was an amazing pickup for my first item. Then I came across this little stash of uh, vintage Marines books. Now, don't pass up books like these, uh, even if they look beat up on the outside, because what I'm flipping through here and showing you all these diagrams and photos, look at that. That's amazing. That's what people want. They don't really care about the cover that much. This one routinely sells for around $25 to $30. You know, and I picked these up for practically nothing. You'll see later. There's a nice old vintage uh, cartoon book. In and of itself, that one is not worth that much, but I just picked it up to go along with the bundle. Um, and that, you know, would include this next one here, which, you know, you might think from the front of it, oh, that's just going to be like, um, you know, a documentary book, you know, about the war. But if you go in, you see it's actually a, a cartoon uh, series and uh, it's called Leatherhead. And that's based on the term leatherneck, which you see here is used on the title. That's a term uh, sometimes used for Marines. You can see there it's actually signed by the author uh, because Marines sometimes wore these leather collars for protection and to uh, display themselves properly in uniform. Now, this cool nautical welcome sign from Schaefer's is probably still sitting there because nobody knew if it worked. So I just walked back to the house, plugged it into an outlet, and there you go. It worked. So picked it up for 10 bucks. It's worth about 80 This piece was amazing. $5 for this massive Schaefer's vintage beer tap. I'm hoping I could get over $100 for that. Let me know in the comments what you think that one might go for. And let me know who you think this is. I thought at first it was a young Woodrow Wilson, but I'm not sure. But I got everything for $20, so really happy about that. Well, that was a great uh, first stop off. And uh, even better, Mrs. Primetime's driving me around right now. So uh, this is great. I've got chauffeur services and everything here. So she's just purposely moving the car back and forth. So we're going to head down to a village-wide um, garage sale. So, um, you know, we'll see. It's an older area, so hopefully there's some good stuff there. Honestly, I'm so happy with all that stuff that I just found there that... You know, I, I'm happy for the rest of the day, really. Uh, turns out that stuff all came from 
um, a, an elderly man uh, in the family, a grandfather of some of the people who were there who, uh, who had passed away. So they took all the stuff from his house and they brought it over there. So sometimes, I mean, that's a good example of where, you know, you could find an estate sale with items that are laid out on the driveway and uh, it doesn't even come from the actual house that you see. So, you know, you just never know sometimes. So anyway, let's get off to the uh, other sales. So this is one of the houses from the village garage sale that we went to. And in one of the houses, I came across multiples of this really cool Halloween shirt says live in the dream on it, kind of sarcastic, you know, relating to the mom who's overwhelmed trick or treating with the kids on Halloween. There was extra small, small, medium, may even have been some larger sizes in there. So if anyone's interested in that or anything else you see in the video, just let me know in the comments or send me a message. I got all six shirts plus this cool Blue Jay plush for $5. Blue Jays are my favorite birds, by the way, just in case anyone was curious about that. Uh, now, this is an amazing series. If you ever see it, don't pass it up. If you get it for a good price, 29 of these, which is what you see in there, go for around $80. I got all of those books for $3, so great score there. $0.75 cents for this nice, colorful macaw. Uh, great plush right here. Douglas is the name of the company uh, that made it. Don't worry about these little white strings here. You could just snip those off with a small scissor and no one will ever know they were there. Uh, you get like, you know, 15 bucks out of that. So in the box it goes. Then I came across this. I picked it up just based purely on gut because I love vintage chalkware. It looks like a Dutch hobo boy. Um, don't worry about the little white patches there on the bottom because no one's going to notice that when they display it. So I'm not sure exactly what I could get out of it, but you know, for $2, I figured it was a worthy pickup. Then Mrs. Primetime came over to me and said, Hey, look, I found these cards. You know, she knows the character of the thing. And so, um, I said, yeah, that's interesting. And then she said, well, look at all these. And so, you know, I started looking through them and I said, wow, you know, first of all, you could tell they're really great shape, nice, sharp corners, very colorful, uh, no price on it though. So the question was, what were they going to ask for? And you could see from everything else already, you know, things were reasonably priced. So I had a good feeling I'd be able to, you know, get them for a low price. Now, the thing with these cards is I have done very well selling comic trading cards, but you really want to have complete sets. Don't get me wrong. There's some individual cards that could sell well, particularly if you find hologram cards, which are really shiny cards. And sometimes individually, or if you find a couple of them, you could sell those and, you know, you know get sometimes even up to like 50 bucks out of, uh, you know, a few of them. Just depends on what series they're from. Um, but they weren't sure exactly what they wanted for them. You could see that one there at a price of $10.99 on them. Well, I got all of the cards for $10. You know, I emphasized there were some duplicates. It was going to take uh, some time to go through it. And ultimately, they didn't want to take the time to go through it. So they were like, all right, uh, you know, $10 is uh, what it is. They were happy to be done with them. And I was happy to take them. So uh, it worked out, uh, you know, for both parties. So great pickup there and good find. By, uh, by Mrs. Primetime, you know, got to give her some credit there for sure. So um, after this, we started going around looking at some more sales and I uh, came across this mug, uh, this uh, when you stumble, make it part of the dance. So I thought it was symbolic of what I went through with the flood and what I talk about is you just got to keep moving on and that's what it says inside the cup. I picked it up for a dollar. These uh, go for right around 35 bucks, and this mug doesn't come across too often. So nice pick up there. Okay, now this is weird. We just found a random estate sale. Um, that doesn't usually happen. So we're going to go in here and check this out. All right, so when I came over to this bookshelf and saw the price of $2 for DVDs, I couldn't believe it because this Lord of the Rings Return of the King sealed set, you know, that's about 30 bucks right there. So pick that up for $2. Uh, then saw this Carol Burnett uh, show uh, DVD set, and that was also sealed. Probably get 20 to $30 out of that one as well. Uh, then there were these uh, Charles Dickens sets, one and two. 
you know, again, probably somewhere around 30 bucks on it. Then there's another return of the king set, not sealed. There's the two towers. So I'm looking for the missing piece of the trilogy. And there it is down there. Those three together with a fellowship of the ring, that should go for around $50. So that's only a $6 investment there. Then I came across uh, here, the Midsummer Murders. You could see there, there was five, six, and seven. There's 10, 11, and eight, and nine were there. So I'm like, where are the ones from the beginning? So I look down, I look down. Do you see it? Do you see it? You got to check the other shelves. So when there's smoke, there's usually fire and there it is. And keep in mind, those are not marked one, two, three, and four, but that's what it is. And sometimes that's what happened with these DVD sets is they didn't always give them the numbers initially. And then later on they did. So I picked up all four. That's a big score. Uh, this is awesome. I love that. Lots of treasures pointing down. So uh, I love going in these you know, downstairs spaces. But initially I was bummed out because I looked in this room and I'm like, oh no, this is just going to be a bunch of new stuff. You know, I'm hoping for like some cool vintage stuff. So let me show you the other side there. Again, you know, I'm kind of bummed out. I'm like, wow, this is just like, you know, little ceramics and stuff, you know, some, you know, flower things. I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do anything with this, but there's a room back there. So I'm like, all right, let me check out this room. I bet there's some treasures in here. And this is where the vintage stuff was. Now, there's probably a vampire or something up there. So uh, that's why I have it cordoned off. But, you know, right as soon as I walk in, there's this vintage uh, Ziggy ashtray. I love vintage Ziggy things. I always pick them up when I could find them. And so that right there goes for around like, you know, around 20 bucks. And then there was some cool vintage Halloween pieces right here. Like there's these, um, you know, little figures and stuff. So two packs of them sealed. So uh, I picked that up. And then this was cool. I figured someone would like this. Look at this. It's uh, the black cat and the handles are made like a um, a black cat's tail. So I thought that was really neat. So, uh, picked that one, threw that up, uh, right in the box. Then this was cool. Uh, Syracuse guidebook from 1976. So, you know, for people who are from the central New York area, uh, either still living here or, or who moved, they would want to look back at this for some nostalgia. So I figured this would be a low price pickup. It might sit for a little bit, but someone eventually will buy it, you know, hopefully somewhere around like, you know, $20 or so. So you could see there just flipping through and it just shows all the different, uh, you know, aspects of Syracuse back in the 70s. So someone will want that. Uh, you know, to do a little bit of a look back. So I always pick up these old Syracuse things when I find them. And, um, you know, then I looked across and sure enough, what do I find? A comic book, Classics Illustrated. I love Classics Illustrated. Has a little bit of damage up top. Don't worry about it because almost all the Classics Illustrateds uh, were damaged. So uh, I just grabbed this and added it to the box. All right, so I got everything there for $30. The DVDs came out to $22, and then there was that miscellaneous stuff that I got. And she asked me, you know, all right, what, what should we do for the rest of it? And when I said $25, she said $30, and she knew what all that stuff was worth pretty much. She knew I was getting an amazing deal. So I didn't even argue with her. I just, uh, you know, got everything for 30 bucks. And then Mrs. Primetime told me she picked this up for a dollar. She found it underneath uh, two items. So. Good uh, find by Mrs. Primetime. There's no current comps for it, but um, this company, Jmar, is known for uh, selling some uh, good um, vintage puzzles. So someone's trying to sell this one for $30, so hopefully we could get around 20 for it. It is complete. So good find, Mrs. Primetime. All right, so I picked up these English muffin rings at another garage sale for $2 a piece. Don't worry about that part that says never used. People aren't buying these for the box. They're buying them for the rings. I should be able to sell both of those for right around $30. And uh, then I also found this new yoga mat. It's pretty big. And for only $3, um, that's really a no-brainer because that's going to sell for many times that. But this was the best pickup. Uh, these are these 1980s recipe cards. Now, it said make an offer on it, which, you know, Mrs. Primetime said that's probably why they were still sitting there because people were worried how much the price would be. But I still always ask them to give me a price, even if it says make an offer and it paid off this time because she only wanted $5 for it. That should sell for around 70 bucks. So as you could see there, I got everything at the sale for $12, another big score. All right, so I came back here to Primetime Treasure Headquarters to just unload the treasures. Uh, I'll show them to you right here. And um, we're just going to get something to eat and then head back to two more estate sales.
All right, well, here's everything from so far this morning. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff uh, in this box alone. Now, this is the box I normally take with me to estate sales like I was this morning. Um, but, you know, I have an extra, like a backup one here that I'm gonna use just to save some time. All right, so what's under the bun for the primetime lunch? Well, we've got a nice soft artisan roll with some pulled pork. There's some cheddar cheese melted right there. And Mrs. Primetime's homemade spicy coleslaw. Mmm, it is so good. Just amazing. And of course, got a Mountain Dew to go with this. So, gonna wolf this down, then head out to those estate sales. Take that thing down. You prep for that next squirrel. That's right. All right, well, we are in an old area of Syracuse. The estate sale is up to the left. So um, it lasts until three o'clock. So there's another one that goes until four o'clock. So that's why I'm timing it this way. Right now it's about 1.40. So hopefully that will leave us enough time uh, to hit up each of these sales. All right, so this is the house right here. I love these old houses, you know, they look small on the outside, but when you get in there, they're really actually pretty big. So uh, looking forward to checking out what's there. I'm hoping there's some vintage stuff. All right, well, this house did not disappoint. The dirtier and creepier the stairs going down to the basement, the better for me. Uh, so <laughs> I made it down there as a little uh tight in terms of uh the turn there but uh turned around i hung a left i walked straight back uh to the wall and i came across this really cool vintage bulletin board that i couldn't believe was still sitting there i mean the original price of five dollars was great but everything that you see here in terms of a sticker price it's now half off because it was the last hour of the sale just ignore those uh, little push pins. You pull them right out. This comes from 1970. Someone's trying to sell this right now for over $50 on eBay. So I could definitely not pass that up. I'll show you what it looks like later when I take all those uh, you know, pins off of it and stuff. Uh, so uh, there you can see, just pull right off and no problem. That fabric could just come together. It's fine. And by the way, this is why I bring one of these big boxes with me too, because I could just put it right in there and then just walk around with it uh, really easily. So uh, then I looked around a little more and look right down there, there's two sealed um, VHS tapes. So 10 cents a piece. So they actually threw them in for free when I checked out. So I didn't even pay anything for it. This I would have looked into uh, to pick up, but well, I did look into it. But uh, problem is, as you could see, when I popped it off, it takes a nine volt, but the connector piece on one side was actually missing the connector so it just wasn't worth uh, doing anything with it but this was a great piece uh 10 bucks for this this goes for right around 60 dollars or so they just don't make ones like that really anymore cd alarm clocks now i had to test it out because as you could see there's no obvious outlet so you know you just gotta walk around so i walked over that way figured i'd find one over there and sure enough uh, there it is, and you could see me there testing it. It's spinning around. It's working. I can't play it for you because I'll get a copyright violation on YouTube. Um, I'll play this for you later on, though, so you could hear this. This goes for around uh, $30. Uh, it's a vintage a white noisemaker. It makes a rain sound, and it makes a uh, waterfall sound. It has different levels of intensity. It's really, really cool. You'll hear it later, but I picked that one up. Then I went over to the VHS section. I love Benny Hill, but... Too bad Benny Hill isn't worth a lot of money, but this one looked cool. It's a sealed prepper video. I know it says earthquake on it, but you got to look at the back and it's talking all about prepping and prepping is a really big area. So I figured what the heck for 25 cents, I'll pick up the prepper tape. Maybe someone will want it. Uh, then I always pick up, I remember I've talked about these before, uh, the uh, Galliano liqueurs. Uh, this is just really cool. I mean, it's imported. It's got the tax stamp on the back. Just make sure you empty it of any liquor. The top there empties. Now, usually I buy them in big giant decanter forms, but that's a real little small one there i walked upstairs and um there you go far side books i always tell you about far side books which is back in the news recently by the way because gary larson started to draw far side comics again digitally so if you go online uh, you could see he started to do that uh this one is really cool because uh for the turn of the screw 
that cover is hard to come by. There's many, many covers for it, but the one with Dracula on it is hard to find. It goes for around 15 bucks, and then there were these other vintage, uh, you know, Halloween, ghostly, scary tales books. Then, there we go again. Look, I picked up some more throws. This one's really cool with the granny squares, so I love these crocheted pieces. This one's huge. Now, some people are going to either love that or hate it. I think it's got a great look at that. Look at those granny squares. Great 1980s uh, look to it, so I picked that one up. And uh, I couldn't believe the prices. Remember, everything there half off. So that one's a dollar fifty. The other one was only a buck. And then I came across this, which was really cool. One of these, not this exact one. I can't find this exact one, but uh, this is 4D. And you'll see on the back, it actually looks like it's signed. One of these uh, from this company uh, went for over a hundred dollars. Now I'm not saying this one will, but I couldn't pass it up for five dollars. Uh, there you could see. Uh, right on the back. Uh, really cool. So um, I picked that up, just added it uh, right to the box there, and off we go. Well, this day just keeps getting better. This entire box of stuff, plus the sign, everything here half off for a total price of $20. And that's right, prime time is exempt. No taxes because I use my resale certificate. All right, so that's going to be the end of the sales for today because the other estate sale is 18 minutes south of here, and it just doesn't make sense for me to try to get to that. Um, you know, it's in the opposite direction of Primetime Treasure Headquarters, and I need to get back and start processing stuff and settle down. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to get to go to the sale because that one is also going on tomorrow, plus there'll be a discount. The sale that I was just at, that ended today. So that's another reason why I plan things out that way. And you have to think these things out uh, in advance in terms of strategy. It would have made no sense for me to go to that other sale first, and then I would have lost out on this one. Now, another thing just to point out as a tip is I have a philosophy to not try to rush through the sale that I'm at to get to another one because I don't know if that other one is going to be bad. Uh, plus, if the one that I'm already at is good and has a lot of good stuff to, you know, to pick up, then that's the whole point of it anyway, is to pick stuff up. So, you know, what's the point of running away from that? I love to just exhaust that area, make sure I get done with that, and then I move on to the next thing. But right now, speaking of moving on, let's move on to Primetime Treasure Headquarters and get back. All right, well, we're back here at Primetime Treasure Headquarters, and I wanted to show you a couple things before we wrap up for the day. I took all of the pins off of this Daisy Sunshine a bulletin board, and you can see it really stands out now. Uh, look how bright those colors are. It's amazing. And you, know, you can see right here, it says 1970. So uh, really cool piece. Excited about that one. Uh, I wanted you to hear the white noise that came out of this machine here. So I've got it plugged in, and you can hear it here. So just gonna turn it on. That's a rain. That's the waterfall. Let's put it back on the rain. Then you could adjust it this way. That's really cool. I love waterfalls and rain and stuff, so Really cool piece. So I could see why someone would still want this if they remember using this back in the day. So, neato. All right, well, the last thing that I wanted to share with you was a really nice card that I received. It was a handmade card uh, from Andrew and Marissa Castillo and uh, Baby Hunter. Um, Baby Hunter is a reference to their YouTube channel, A&M Hunters. And I've known them for a while. They've been really supportive. Uh, of me here on YouTube and also in the uh, Facebook group that I run, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. Um, some of you uh, know that we have this event uh, that's called Support That Seller Sunday. And basically what happens is that for someone who's, you know, been, you know, really positive member of the group and supportive of me here uh, on YouTube and in the Facebook group, what I do is I ask everyone in the group to go purchase from that person and I put up their store link. and. You know, for 10 weeks in a row, it wound up generating between 400 and nearly $800 in sales uh, for that person in less than 24 hours. So it's crazy. It's just getting bigger and bigger. And soon enough, we're going to have somebody make $1,000 in sales in one day. So if you're not a member, definitely go join. The link is down below. But let me uh, show you the nice card that they sent me. So it says, thank you, Dominic. I love that. And then on the back, it says, 
prime time and it has the treasure chest there for prime time treasure and inside if that's not incredible enough you have to see the inside of this it's amazing i'm definitely gonna hold on to this forever it's got the mountain dew right up top my favorite drink and then it's got doctor who my favorite television show so there's the tardis and it's got you know someone who looks like the doctor who is um, you know, reading a comic book, my specialty area, and there you can see the nice message from them. So I'm gonna link uh, below uh, to uh, the A&M Hunters YouTube channel. So go over, say hi, and uh, say Primetime sent you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was great, it was a lot of fun uh, picking through all those treasures. And I hope that you picked up on some good tips along the way. So uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you back at the next video, everyone. Take care. Oh.